Welcome back to another weekly GMBN Tech show. Of course, I'm back now. Uh, thanks to Neil for taking over the show last week. Coming up on the show this week, there's some really cool prototype bikes I spotted from Intense. There's an amazing brand new set of Mavic Crossmax flat pedal shoes. There's a BMC new bike with an internal dropper post on there. Really rad XC bike and some wicked stuff from all you guys. Okay, so something small actually to start with the news. We have these really cool Topeak um, Mini 9 tools in the store with a little custom GMBN etching on there. They're really cool, they're quite cheap, they're absolutely tiny. They've got all the usual suspects on there that you need. They come with a little neoprene pouch, a really good one just to stick in your pocket so it's not going to dig into you. And you can actually get away with doing most of the stuff on here. So if you have a look at this in detail here, you'll see it's got a Torx T25 crosshead screwdriver on there, all the usual suspects of Allen keys and even an eight millimeter. Lovely little bit of kit that. Also just check out the store, we've got loads of new kit dropping this week including some brand new jerseys tomorrow. Good stuff in there. Next up in the news, I spotted this really cool intense prototype on Jeff Steber's personal Instagram page. Now Jeff of course is Mr. Intense Bikes. This is the brand new taser that's gonna be coming from Intense. And as you might have worked out by the name, even though it's an old name that's been used, it's gonna be an e-bike. So this is gonna be a first for Intense. Now, knowing what Jeff's like, this won't be the only one. There's probably several different incarnations of this bike that all the team at Intense Bikes will have been out riding on the trail. So I really can't wait to see a few more detailed shots of this, but there you go. So an Intense e-bike is on the way. Next up is the brand new BMC Four Stroke World Cup Cross Country Bike. So it's a full size bike, 100 mil travel, and it's got an integrated drop post. Look how clean that is. So it's 80 to 100 mil drop. It's super light. The actual drop post, 345 grams. So there's basically not really any reason for someone to not run one now. The bike looks so fluid with it. I think that's the best looking version of a drop post I've ever seen. I think it looks really good. Really keen to see how well it actually works because BMC have been showing off their internal dropper post for a couple of years now. I first saw one a couple of years back at Eurobike and it looked really good. I'm quite surprised that no one's actually followed suit yet. So should be interesting to see that. But also the bike is quite radical as far as geometry goes. I mean, have a look at a few of these shots on screen. It's a very clean looking bike. And up front, it's got 67 and a half degree head angle which by no means is that slack but if you think about it compared to modern cross-country bikes it's extremely slack um, you know it's about a degree more than what you'll see on mini trail bikes now but of course you need that sort of agility you need the quick whippy ride on an XC bike but obviously that's quite slack and it's going to give it a lot of stability now up front it's also a lot longer than previous XC bikes so we are seeing the longer geometry transferring across onto XC bikes now I always talk about size XLs just for reference, and the reach on the XL of this is actually 485 millimeters, which is longer than my old Canyon Spectral. And I was running a 60 mil stem on that, and it was about right. So that's a pretty radical approach for a cross country bike, where we're used to seeing far longer stems on there. This is quite a positive thing, I think. You're starting to see those stems getting shorter, but they're realizing actually you can keep the bikes nice and light and actually improve that handling. It's gotta be a good thing. And I think for one, this is probably the best looking XC bike I've seen this year. So you'll also see there's an integrated chain guide on there, which also suggests that it's dedicated for one by, of course, which we know is the future. It's got a fork crown bumper. So obviously you're gonna get some of those wider forks clashing with that down tube. It's just to protect that carbon frame. Frame weight is a 2,180 grams with shock. Complete bike weights are about 10 kilos. So it's pretty flipping light considering it's got dropper post and it's a full suspension bike. Nice work, BMC. Next up on the screen, you will see the brand new Mavic D-Max flat pedal shoes. So there's two versions, there's the Pro and there's the Elite. The technology behind them, they've got Matrix tech in there. So it's a tough Kevlar blend for lightweight and high abrasion resistance. The material is supposed to be very resistant to water and obviously it stops mud and other stuff sticking to them. So it's gonna be quite an interesting shoe to use. The sole itself has got the contour grip, which we've seen before in Mavic. And of course that is also used by their sister brand, Solomon. And that stuff is excellent. So I've got high hopes for these shoes. So there's two models, as you can see, there's the Pro and then there's the Elite. 
the Elite retails for 120 euros, the Pro for 170 euros, and that's got a slightly higher construction on it. It's got an inside ankle protection, ankle box, toe box, all that sort of stuff. They look really cool. I'm actually quite keen to have a go on a set of those to see what they're like. I think that's a smart move from Mavic to come out with a decent flat pedal shoe. Makes me wonder, are we going to see Sam Hill using those and finally not using 510s? He does run a lot of Mavic stuff. Next up, I just want to point to something we talked about a couple of weeks back. It's Guy Martin's proper cleaner. So we've got some here to actually look at. I'm just going to open this in front of you. I've already filled up the spray units with water to the line. And you literally take one of these out and pop it in. And I just want to try this out myself because I think this is a great idea. So that is one of those water soluble things. You pop the whole thing in. Great. And then... Apparently after 20 seconds, you can see it sort of just fizzing away in there. Leave for 20 seconds and shake and you have your bike cleaner. I think that is wicked. Why is no one else doing it? Come on guys, it's gonna cost you a lot of money to ship fluid around. Why not do it this way? Brilliant idea. Okay, you can just see that melting away on the inside. Give that a shake. There we go. Pretty cool, isn't it? Now lastly in the news, even though the World Champs has just happened, I just want to take you through some of the coolest bikes there because every year all the races, the top races at least, seem to get custom painted bikes and helmets and this year I don't think I've seen as many cool bikes as, as we have, like there's so many cool. So on screen now, the first one you can see is done by Fat Creations, is Emily Siegenthaler's bike and this is actually hand painted by Becky Booth. And look at the graphics on it, it's even got all the parts of the course on there. So cool, a really, really nice design. Absolutely love what they do at Fat Creations. And again, another one by Fat Creations now on the screen is from Adam Brayton. So this is his Scott bike, and this thing is absolutely rude. Absolutely dripping in Hope stuff on there. Very much a red, white, blue sort of British theme to it. But look at the finish, that is absolutely stunning. I'll tell you what, there's another person that's got a kind of a home country color bike, and that's Nino Scherter. Look at that. That thing is unbelievable. I think that's probably my favorite actually of all the bikes. I just think it's really simple, but it just does the job great. And then of course is Kate Courtney. Her Specialized just looks absolutely fantastic. I think she's pretty much had the best paint jobs of anyone all year. She seems to have had different custom bikes. We've seen quite a few of those, but that one is absolutely gorgeous. And also talking Specialized, there's look, Bruni's demo. Look at that thing with the gold all over it. That is just so nice. Greg Minard's bike, a little bit more subtle, but very cool, kind of a desert camo-y sort of theme to that. That does look really cool. And Miriam Nicole's bike, her console looks fantastic as well. Martin May's GT Fury, a little bit more basic, but I really like how bold it looks, really jumps out. And then of course there's Aaron Gwynn's YT Chewers, that thing, I think that's the best looking bike he's had, the best custom paint job, it looks really good. But I've got to say, sorry Aaron, your teammate, Angel Suarez, his bike looks way cooler than yours. It looks amazing. Love to know what bikes you thought were the coolest bikes actually at the World Champs. Let us know in those comments below this video. And if, if you've got any links to some really cool pictures, we'd love to see them. My favorite section of the show, at least this week it certainly is, is Bike Cave. This is where you work on your bikes, you store your bikes, you upgrade your bikes, you do all that sort of cool stuff. And more importantly, you've got cool tools and other bike associated stuff. So send them in, make sure you use our uploader. The link to that is at the bottom of the screen. Keep flowing them in, I love seeing them. And everyone here at GMBN Tech loves seeing them too. Of course, you can also send them in by email and other places, but the uploader is the place to do it. The link's also underneath this video. And we're gonna jump straight in with Ben from Essex in England. Um, this bike was given to my son to get him racing. He wants to be an international XCO champion. Joe, that is so cool to hear. So I'm guessing you might ride at Hadley Farm, which is over that way, which is of course where we've had the Olympics in our country there. And um, pretty spectacular XC course that is. So good to see that you've got the XC bike there. Running at one by, which is quite cool. It's quite a big chaining on there. Um, must have some pretty big legs, I guess, to get get that thing spinning, but more importantly, you've got a jam-packed tool wall there. I can see a pair of uh, Renthal carbon fat bars hanging up there, waiting to be upgraded onto a bike, no doubt. Some spare disc rotors, a hacksaw, good ratio of 90 degree placement. I see you've got an air shot. They're really good, those. I really, really like those things. It was Charles, wasn't it, the guy from Airshot? 
I met him when he first came up with that idea. A lot of people thought he was bonkers, and I just thought he was absolutely brilliant the first time. And in fact, actually, a little story behind Airshot, I think the coolest deal he did was license it to, uh, to Schwalbe, and they, they produced exactly the same things made by him. Um, so I'm guessing he made a bit of money out of that, so fair play to Airshot for that. And it's also spawned everyone else making more products of the similar sort of vein. Very cool to see. Right, let's have a look at your tools then. What do you got up here? Plenty of part tools, disc rotor straightening tool, pedal spanner, cable cutters. Yep, you've got some good stuff there. Uh, press fit, bottom bracket, um, bearing removal tool there. Uh, you've got like um, wheel dishing tools. No, that's a frame jig, frame alignment jig. What can I speak English? Uh, chain tool, you've got it all actually. You've got a really good selection of stuff up there. Very well organized too. And some uh, polyfiller hairline crack. That's for your ceiling, I guess, is it? I know, do a bit of DIY myself. Next up is from Stephen in Sweden. Um, I'm a Bristolian, living in Sweden for 15 years. That's why Bristol is just down the road from where the GMBN offices are, actually. We're based in Bath in the southwest of the UK. I've uh, been living in Sweden for 15 years and I've always been collecting bikes and building them. Uh, I don't have a car, so bikes are my thing to do long rides on. At least twice a ride, uh, mountain bike of all types. Right, what do you got in here then? Um, Wow, what is that crazy thing? Like half a bike, half a skateboard with stunt pegs on it. Bizarre, it's kind of like a stunt unicycle. Now you've got this other random thing as well, the huge chambering, little wheels and no saddle. <laughs> Never seen them in my life. Nice work, I'm guessing this is a picture of you, Stephen, by a really beautiful lake actually, with a Canyon XC bike, looking nice. Absolutely love it, good work, Stephen. Always good to see that stuff. And next up is from Carl, Woodstock, Georgia, USA. Hi Doddy, loving the show and all the folks here at GMBM. Thank you, we love you too for watching. Um, here's a few shots of my bike cave in my basement. I built the workbenches using a couple of pieces of countertop I bought from a neighbor. Nice work. Uh, I love wrenching on my, my son's bikes and having a proper work area is essential. Yep, absolutely agree with you there. You'll also notice I repurposed a couple of old hitch racks to hold bikes that are waiting for service. I work on bikes for friends and neighbors to give proceeds to charity. Oh, that's really cool, good work dude. My home shop also paid off as it gave my son a place to gain some skills. And he's now a full-time mechanic at the local bike shop at the age of 17. Hey, that's really cool to hear. I want to add a park truing stand in the near future to my collection. Looking good, nice pegboard, cram packed with all the sorts of good tools there. Hacksaws, WD-40, chain cleaners. Oh, you've got one of those nice spoke rulers. That's actually one of my favorite little tools, little aluminium one by Park. Not a lot of people actually use those, but I love it. I use them my most days, to be honest. Looking good. So what's on the walls in there? So is that just like a stud wall with insulation? You've got like plastic sheeting. Are you gonna put some OSB or something over the top of that maybe at some point? I guess you don't need to. I guess it does the job perfectly well, but definitely got a great setup there. Nice, nice vice action. Got a compressor too. Always like a compressor. Tell you what, that's a really cool setup. Nice work, Carl. Thanks for sending that in. Oh, actually, there's a couple more pictures. How many pictures you sent in? Wow, so you've got Surly in the stand there. Two load of wheels hanging up top. Pretty jam-packed, actually. Looking good. Ah, so that's your bike stand area. That's cool, and that's a great idea. Hey, you should have sent that in to Hacks and Bodges for uh, the dirt shed chain. In fact, I might send this one over to Martin. I think that's really cool. Could be in with a chance of winning that chain reaction voucher. Nice work. Next up is from Bryn in Aldershot. This is my bike cave where, due to a disagreement of gravity up the Surrey Hills, leaving me with a broken collarbone, um, I'll be spending the majority of the next six weeks fettling the bikes ready for my return to the hills. That's the spirit. Make sure your bike is tip top, ready to go and smash it when you get back out there. Um, what are you doing? Keep up the excellent work with the show. It's really my go-to place when trying to find out anything about mountain bikes. Well, that's great to hear. I tell you what, I love your setup. It's really cool. Right, really good. You could probably get there's room in there for a TV, I'm sure. I'm sure you could put a TV in there. That'll keep you entertained for the next six weeks, wouldn't it? It's good though. So we've got Santa Cruz. Uh, was that an old Nomad or is it a new Nomad? I can't quite see from this angle. Nice set of Fox Forks on there with some custom decals to match the pedals. Looking good. YT, of course. Super popular in the UK, actually, YT. You see a lot of those around. Camelbacks up the back, hanging to dry. Looking well used. TF Tune box down there. Love those guys, they're quite close to us. So TF Tuned is a suspension tuner. In fact, that's where we were earlier, which you're gonna see in a minute. Um, some other cool stuff, some motorbike helmets, some arrows up on the top there. Big bike bag, pretty crammed actually. That's a good, good solid sort of bike cave. Nice work. 
Oh, now we've got the motorbikes too, the Alpine Stars jacket, it's the leathers. Nice. Yeah, into that, dude. I'm loving that chair as well. It's like a bucket seat sort of office chair. That's well cool. Nice. Thank you, everyone, for sending those in. Please keep them coming in. We'd love to see it. Next week, I'm going to give you a little tour around my bike cave because it's just about ready now, and I'm starting to hang all my bikes in there. So uh, I can show you some cool stuff. See you next week. Okay, now it's time for Rewind, but I'm actually just going to take you for a little walk downstairs into our workshop because there's a very, very cool bike that I want to show you. Let's go. <laughs> Wait till you see this thing. Have a look at this bad boy. So this is a mountain cycle San Andreas from about 1991, and this particular one belongs to a friend of mine called Paul Smith, who was the technical editor for Mountain Biking UK magazine for many years. And he saw the benefits of this bike when it first came out. Now you have to bear in mind that when this bike came out in 91, most people were struggling with the concept of the first RockShox RS1 fork, even having suspension on a bike, but this has got front and rear suspension, had the first real proper set of disc brakes on it, and the fork itself is inverted. So this is their own brand fork on the front here. It's two inch travel front and rear. The fork is an inverted design. It's got their own sort of bolt on axle, pro stop disc brakes with floating discs on there. It's got a hydraulic caliper, which is cable actuated. It's got Rissy Racing shock. That's not stock on this bike. It actually had its own aftershock, which was an elastomer one originally, but this is something that Paul's put on himself. An original flight saddle on there, control tech stem, like, oh my God, I'm like in techno geek mode. This is just amazing. So he's got a Royce uh, titanium bottom bracket in there, Hutch flat pedals from Paul's BMX days, uh, Cook's quality products cranks on there. This thing is just amazing. Look at the condition of it. Paul actually raced this earlier this year, an event called the Malvern Hills Classic in the UK. And it's gonna be a big retro thing going on next year. So I'm definitely gonna be at that race myself next year. But just look at this thing. Just leagues ahead of everything else at the time. It doesn't even look that dated now, if you consider how old it is. And just a couple more cool things on here are some of the original Avid brake levers. This was pre-SRAM days. This is when Avid were a company just making high-spec CNC machined levers like this. Look how beautiful they are. Absolutely lovely. And they still feel good today, I've got to say. And I also just noticed that the custom clamps here holding the Dior LX Shimano shifters here are made by X-Lite. Now, X-Lite is the company that you will probably all know now these days as Muckoff. Muckoff, of course, was just one of the products made by X-Lite and it ended up being such a popular product that the brand actually became the main flagship thing. So there you go. So many cool stories. And just another thing that you can't quite see is some of the original Renthal bars just underneath here. So, pretty flipping cool. Okay, now it's time for Top Mods. This is where you get to send in pictures or video clips of you and your bikes and the modifications you've been doing to make them better. Could be anything, could be a new set of tires, could be you improved your gears by putting a new gear cable on. Literally, however big or small, send them in. The uploader link is on the bottom of the screen there and it's underneath this video in the link's description bit. Don't forget, if you do send a video in, try not to use any music in it because we won't be allowed to use it or it can be quite hard to use it and get the right. So if it's just you talking, that is what we want and we want more of those because we've got a really great one kicking off with a guy called Marcus from Austria. So it's an Evil Reckoning size large and his modification is building the whole bike. That's about as far as you can go with a, a top mod, I'd say. And there's a video entry, which is really cool. I just want to show some of the pictures because it's really nice to see a setup in there. Love the wood pile and the fact you've got a work stand, a nice sort of like big sort of uh, fluorescent tube light behind it. Nice Norco downhill bike as well. Is that the Orem, I think? Nice Tamil Maxxis tires on there too. A specialized box in the background. I'm guessing you like your bikes, Marcus. Um, but anyway, so look, have a look at some of this video stuff of Marcus putting that bike together.
Thank you for taking the effort to do it. It's like, it's a decent video actually. It's really cool seeing you put the bottom bracket in, get the cranks in there, get those gears working. Really, really a cool bike. I mean, I'm a big fan of Evil Bikes. I think they've got it just right. Even though they've got the branding nice. And also notice on your one, you've got some custom decals on there too. So obviously the derailleur's got the sort of the red jockey cage on the left-hand side, like the non-drive side. And you've got red decals on your frame to match that and the pedals too. It looks really, really cool. Well into that. Thank you for sending that one in, Marcus. Uh, next up is from David in Vienna, also in Austria. Um, I've changed so many things on my bike and I can't even think about stopping. I've got so much in mind, but it really feels like it's truly mine. That's the whole point of modifying your bike, however far you go, making a bike your own. When I first bought the pedals, I got the DMR Volts on there, then I changed the stem um, to a normal one with a Renthal 35mm and external housing for the monitor. So this is an e-bike, I can't actually see which e-bike it is yet. Um, a high bike, I think, looking at the graphics on there. I mean, you've actually changed everything. So you changed the chain ring, you've got the big down tube protector made from an old tire. That's a great idea, especially on e-bikes actually, because those things can take a bit of a hammering. You should see some of Jonesy's bikes. Looks like they're about seven years old, poor things. But uh, yeah, so you've got the E13 chain guide on there. You've got a new SRAM chain ring on there too. Loads of good mods on there. Also, you've got a lower guide. That looks like you've made that yourself. What do you say about that? That's pretty cool. Loads of details there. So you've done an FSA headset. You've got rid of that and put a Chris King in there. Last headset, you'll ever need to buy that. Um, changed the Magura disc to Shimano ones. Upgraded to 200 mil at the back. Bought performance brake pads. Yeah, you definitely need that on those sort of bikes. So now fast that Neil's been going through brake pads on his e-bike. Yeah, looking, looking really good, dude. Thank you for sending that in. A lot of good modifications in there. And this interesting looking chain guide you've built. Um, tell me a bit more about the chain guide. Uh, not the E13, the homemade one. Uh, send us an email, actually, um, to uh, hellotech at gmbn.com. I'd like to know about that. That's quite cool. Um, but looking good. Like the little Chromag top cap on there as well. That's really nice. And gold, gold caps on the uh, valves. Wicked. Looking good. So, so many upgrades on there actually. Spent a lot of money doing that. Thank you for sending it in, David, but I'd love to hear from you about that little modification you've done. That could be good for hacks and bodges over on the Dirt Shed Show on GMBN. Keep them coming in, guys. We love seeing your top mods. Okay, now it's time for Tech of the Week, and this thing is about as techy as you could possibly get. It's a brand new thing that Calvin brought over to show me from Park Tools. This is the BX3 or the big blue box. So it is on wheels, so you can roll this thing around. It's got like a handle like you would see on luggage. And this is for all those mechanics to have a full mobile setup. It's got gas struts in here to open it up. Whoa, look at this bad boy. On the inside, you can have all your tools hanging up on display. Can't quite reach those from here. These, these open out. Got all your tool dividers on the inside there. It's obviously dust and water resistant. You've got the gas struts in there. It's fairly weighty, but you know everything's gonna be protected. It weighs at 21 pounds or about 9.8 kilos as it is. And Calvin's left a few gifts in here for us, which is nice. It's one of those part tool sporks, actually the coolest thing in the world. That deserves tech of the week on own, to be honest. But, um, but there you go. It's just a really cool way of carrying all your tools, putting them in one place. Um, they're not exactly cheap, but these things are probably the best ones you can get on the market. Super cool. Okay, so now it's time for bike build. Of course, not being here for a while. Um, earlier on today, I paid a little visit to TF Tuned. Here's how it went. So we're just off to uh, TF Tune Shocks to finally get the suspension shorted out on the uh, project bike. So we've just finished at TF Tune Shocks and Finn inside there has just sorted out the fork and the rear shock. It's given the shock a basic service, changed the oil for some of their high performance stuff. Uh, also make it, made it a bit more so progressive, so ramp up. And then the fork has done a few cool things on the inside of there. The damping itself is actually excellent on this particular fork. But I wanted it to feel more progressive to match the rear end. I wanted it to feel a little bit softer off the top. So you have to find out a little bit more in detail for next week, but pretty excited the fact that it's done. Literally just got to bolt that rear caliper on, trim a few cables down like this, and uh, good to go. 
So there we go, there's another GMBN Tech Weekly show in a bag. That's a 36 show, I can't believe we got this far. Thank you for all your support. Let's get this channel up to 100,000 followers as quick as we can. Love having you guys around. Don't forget to click on the globe to subscribe and tell everyone all about us. For another video, make sure you watch our Ask Special with Kelvin Jones from Park Tool. That was such a cool thing to do. Um, I'm in awe of how much he knows, so make sure you check that one out and give us a thumbs up if you like the video.